Okay, this lesson deals with special right triangles. Uh, we're going to start looking at the, the first one is going to be 45, 45, 90 tri uh, right triangle. And what that means is that um, I have a triangle, and obviously one of them is 90 degrees. We'll say that one's 90 degrees. And then uh, because these two angles right here are the, same, are the same measure, that's 45 and say 45, that means that um, it's an isosceles right triangle, which means these two right here are the same. Okay. So um, kind of use Pythagorean theorem to figure this out. If I let this be A, that means this side has to be A. And if we want the relationship for, or the, the measure of this hypotenuse, using Pythagorean theorem, what we would have is we have A squared plus A squared is equal to something, or C squared. We're going to figure out what C is. Okay? Um, so this would give me just A squared plus A squared. That's going to give me 2A squared. Okay? So I'd have 2A squared is equal to C squared. Um, remember that we can take the square root to figure out what these would be. Okay, um, so here the square and the square root would cancel out. Here, what I would have is I would have the square root of two times the square root of a squared. I can factor those apart separately since I have multiplication here. The square root of a squared is just a, so I have the square root of two times a. So that would be my hypotenuse would be that. So the relationship for these is that if I have some length A for the legs, the hypotenuse is always going to be A times the square root of 2. Now, so looking at this example for the 45, 45, 90, what we want to do is um, set these up. If this is 45, that's 90. That means this other one over here has to be 45 degrees as well. Now, there is a pattern, and some people can see it this way if they draw a table. We have the 45, 45, and the 90. Okay? The 45 is always going to be across the two legs. And we usually, what we do is we kind of give those values um, some letter. We're going to use A in this case. Okay? So we would have A, A, and then this would be A square root of 2. Okay? So this side right here is going to be A square root of 2. Now, according to the picture, since um, my 8, or my A is 8, that tells me these two sides right here are 8. And all we do have to do for the hypotenuse is substitute the 8 in place of the A. So my answer is A square roots, 8 square roots of 2. All right, so here's another version of this, or a different problem with the same 45, 45, 90. And I know it's 45, 45, 90 because these two sides are both labeled X, which means that the sides are congruent, which means these angles have to be congruent. So they both have to be 45. Okay. Now, if you want, we can make that table. We have the 45, 45, and 90. Okay. And we're going to use x, x, and x for roots of 2 for this. Okay. So looking at the diagram here, um, these are my x's. This side up here is going to be x for roots of 2 because it's across. The right angle. So, what I have is 5 square roots of 2 here. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set these two equal to each other. So, I have x square roots of 2 is equal to 5 square roots of 2. And if I'm solving for x, I'm going to divide both sides by the square root of 2. Okay, square root of 2 over square root of 2 is just 1. So, x is equal to um, 5 squared to 2 divided by square root of 2. Again, those two factor out, and so x is just 5. Okay, so the side length here is going to be 5. All right, the other special right triangle we're going to talk about is what's called the 30, 60, 90 triangle. Now, what that means, obviously, um, if it's like the 45, 45, 90, the angles are 30, 60, and 90 degrees. Now, usually what we do, um, I'm not going to derive this one for you, but this, we let the smallest, we always let the smallest uh, side be x. So that's the side that's across the 30. Okay? The side across the 60, which would be this side down here, we let that one be x square roots of 3. Okay? And then the side that's across the 90, that's going to be our 2x side. 
Okay, so it means that, that this side, the hypotenuse, is twice as big as the shortest side. Now, if we can make that table like we did with the, the 45, 45, 90, where we would have our 30, 60, and 90. Now, across the 30, we let that be x. Across the 60 is x times the square root of 3. And across the 90 is going to be always 2 times the shortest side. Okay? So we're going to... Uh, so here's our example. Um, they gave us this side right here is the 9. We want to find the two values, x and y. So uh, what we got to do is we got to label these across. So across the 30, that's my x. Across the uh, 60, that's where our 9 goes. And then across the 90 is our y value that we're trying to solve for. Okay, so what we got to do is we got to set the 9 equal to the x square root of 3. Okay, so we start with 9 is equal to x times the square root of 3. So we got to divide both sides by the number for next to the coefficient, the number with the x, which is going to be square root of 3. And that goes to 1. And so x is going to equal 9 over the square root of 3. Okay. But we can't have the square root, we can't have a square root, a radical in the denominator. So what we got to do is we got to multiply by a 1, or a special 1. What we want to do is we want to fix it to get the square root out of the denominator. And the trick on this is that we use that number, whatever denominator we have, and we multiply top and bottom by that square root number. And okay. so what happens is the square root of 3 times the square root of 3 ends up just being 3. Okay. And then the 9 times the square root of 3, those two just kind of go together since the 9 doesn't have a square root in it. Okay, But here we can actually reduce that. We can factor that 9 divided by 3 is just going to give me um, 3 square roots of 3. I can factor out a 3 out of these. And so I would just have 3 square roots of 3. So this x side here, can replace that with 3 square roots of 3. Okay, Now the y is 2 times my x. So it's going to be very important to always figure out what this x is first. Since now we know that it is 3 square roots of 3. Now all I have to do for that is I'm going to set y equal to 2 times x, which is going to be our 3 square roots of 3. Okay. Now um, since 2 and the 3 are the numbers that don't have a radical on them, uh, those are the numbers that get multiplied. The square root of 3 just kind of tags along. So this ends up being 6 square roots of 3. Okay, so x we got 3 square roots of 3. y ends up being 6 square roots of 3.